Today on VLAM, we're recreating this awesome shot from our new music video, Mature Town. Welcome everyone to VLAM, video lighting, audio, music, and photography how-to show. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam, and today's episode is sponsored by MattHaslamProductions.com and my brand new album, Shadows, which comes out on February 14th on Valentine's Day of this year. So if you're interested at all, please do check the link in the description down below to download your copy of my new album, Shadows, which has a ton of great songs on it and is probably the best album that I've ever come out with. But anyway... In that album, I came out with a series, actually a trilogy of music videos, including Mature Town, which is the one right here on your screen. And in that, I had this shot right here, which if you're not aware, if you didn't watch the other video, the hidden Easter eggs hidden inside this music video, this shot right here has a huge meaning in the song. It actually recreates this shot right here from Taylor Swift's Look What You Made Me Do, in which she has a gravestone. But... If you don't have a $3,000 budget to actually buy uh, a prop like this for your film and create it in real film, then in a practical effect, then maybe you want to do it in post-production like we did. And that's exactly what we did. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today because this was the most requested thing that we were asked to show how it was done. And it was just so complex that we're going to go through step by step. And this was actually just a photograph that we took on our GoPro of a gravestone. Now, if you're not aware, here in the United States, you're not allowed to actually show names up close on gravestones if you're in a graveyard. Um, obviously, if you have a wide shot, you're allowed to do it. Um, they can't really stop you from that. But you're not allowed to go this close to gravestones and show it publicly too much because it's just not classy. And uh, I th and I'm I was told at least... Forgive me if I'm wrong on this. You can check with a lawyer. But I was told at least by multiple graveyards now that it is actually against the law um, to show things like that up close. So we actually took a photo of the front of this gravestone to see what is believable. We actually took a photo of the front to see what kind of fonts they use, what, uh, how, how the fonts are faded on, how it's actually chiseled out into the gravestone, how that's faded over time, just to make it look more believable in our VFX here. But we took a shot of the back of this gravestone because I knew I wanted text to be written on this gravestone. And we actually started with this shot in Photoshop, so we're going to go over there right now. This is the original photograph, and as you can tell, it's lit a lot better than what uh, the shot in Premiere is over here. And that's because we added a day for night type effect later on, which we will again show you later on down the line. But as for the photograph itself, we wanted to make it so that these pieces of text are on this gravestone and so that they actually look believable. And again, we went back to that front photo of the gravestone to see what kind of fonts to use. And so for, for instance, the R, we used this uh, Trojan Pro uh, font right here. And that looks really believable. And I think all of these are actually Trojan Pro uh, font, but they're all different sizes. So there's actually three different layers of text on top of this gravestone shot. And basically, there are no effects done to the actual shot itself yet. It's just the regular photograph that came in from my camera. But how do we actually apply these pieces of text? And how do we make it look like it's chiseled into this uh, actual stone? So we're going to start off with this R here, and as we're going through, we're going to explain everything step by step. Now, let's add a new piece of text to this. Let's add maybe an R to this, uh, to this shot. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to make it, let's say, 160-point font. Maybe 175, a little bit bigger. And next, I'm going to... Click Command T, and if you're on PC, it's going to be a little bit different, and that's going to allow me to rotate it a little bit, just so I can get it looking a little bit more believable. And I'm going to apply that effect, and I'm going to just keep rotating that until I'm happy with where it looks on the gravestone, so that it looks believable to me. And again, this is all about very, very minuscule things that make it look believable in the end. 
There's a lot of VFX on this shot, and everything we do is done to make it look like this was actually on the gravestone that day when we shot it. So next, I'm going to go over here to that layer, and I'm going to hit multiply over on my right-hand side of the screen. And that way, it's no longer there. And you're asking yourself, well, if the text isn't there, how do I get it back? And how do I make it chiseled on the screen? So that is actually done over here in our FX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that R and I'm going to hit bevel and emboss. And as you can tell on this R, I did those same effects. Click OK just to get over here. And I'm going to actually show you on this R what we did. I checked marked bevel and emboss, which adds that extra little bevel in there. And blend mode, multiply, opacity 100, uh, fill opacity 100. Down here in inner stroke, I added multiply for my blend mode and then opacity 84, which just happened to work for this shot specifically. I made sure the color of the shadow was black and uh, the distance was 17, uh, choke was 28% and size was 7. All of those things are going to be very specific to your actual shot. That is the, the, Those are the settings which worked for this specific shot, but... Uh, from tutorials I found online on how to do this, basically it was vastly different between shot and shot. So you have to figure out what works for your specific shot. Um, what I would start by doing is putting in these specific settings that you're seeing on your screen right now and then playing around with them, playing around with the distance a little bit to see what maybe works for your shot. Maybe you want it a little bit deeper in there. Maybe you want it completely black. Maybe you want the choke to be a little bit more. Maybe you want the size to be a little bit more. It really doesn't matter. It's all about what you want that shot to look like in the very end. So go through all of your text that you have on screen. You can create as many, laser, many layers as you want. You can create as much text as you want, and many different fonts as you want, just as long as it looks believable. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to export this shot. This is a 4K shot, so we're going to hit export, export as... And then I'm going to be sure to save it as a PNG file and then save it in the biggest resolution I possibly can, which for this shot was 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 on my GoPro. I'm going to convert it to sRGB, which is the color space I want it in for my end video anyway, and I'm going to hit export all. Once I'm in Premiere, I'm going to bring that file into my uh, computer. I'm going to go over here to my subsequence for Gravestone. Now, why I put a subsequence on here is because this is so VFX heavy that it is <laughs> just just kills your computer if you don't put it in a subsequence. If you try to do all this in your main timeline, don't, okay? Your computer will crash no matter how good it is um, unless you have like a Hollywood like $10,000 computer or $50,000 computer. I don't know. But like just don't try it. Always have these kind of VFX in subsequences. It's so much better for your computer. So we're going to bring in this gravestone picture to my timeline right now. And it's just a picture. It's not going to move anywhere. It's not going to have any effects on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add Lumentary Color to this shot. And we're going to go over here to Window and hit Lumentary Color. Now... What we're going to do this shot is we're going to bring down the exposure a little bit because we don't want it to be light. This is part of our day for night scene and making this look like it was actually shot at night. We're going to bring down our exposure a little bit, bring up our contrast a little bit, bring down the highlights a little bit, and you want to bring up the whites a little bit in any day for night scene so that the whites are more apparent and so it doesn't look as bad in your shot. Then we're going to go down here to curves and we're going to bring down the red and we're going to bring down the green. So this shot looks a little more blue, which is how most night shots are, uh, how most night shots look on film. So the next effect we're going to add on this is the same picture again. This is the original picture that we had before we brought it into Photoshop and added all the other effects to it. So we're going to add some GoPro effect to it, which is down here, GoPro because it was shot on a GoPro and it was shot at 4K really wide. We're going to add 4K wide effect so it takes that lens distortion out of there and that fisheye effect out of there. Now we're going to 
basically mask out this grave. And this doesn't have to be very, very specific. It doesn't have to be exact. Don't worry about that. It just has to be over the text. As long as all of your text is inside of this little box that you're making, you are absolutely fine, okay? Now, we're going to go over here to Lamentary Color and copy and paste that effect. That way it has the same color distortion. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our opacity on this layer and go down to Exclusion. Now, Exclusion is going to bring out the color in this layer more than the bottom layer. And why we're doing that is because we're going to later take the opacity down here. And this is just basically overlaying all of your text so it makes it look a tad bit more believable in there. And we're going to bring that down to about 40% opacity. And that way it looks a lot better. This text suddenly now has more texture on it. And we're going to feather the edges a little bit. That way it looks a lot better than that. And this doesn't add much, granted. But it does add that tiny bit more of believability to it. And a tiny bit more realism to it. Next up, we're going to kind of do the same thing. But this time, we're adding all of the stuff around this. So we're bringing out the color in all of the grass areas around here. So we're going to add that same shot once more and bring it in and we're going to mask out everything besides that shot once we add some 4k lens distortion always forget that step because i'm working with the gopro now we're going to mask out all of that goodness and now i'm masking out for the actual sky and then we're going to color all of this so that the ground looks more believable. Because as you can tell, the ground looks very yellowish. And it was shot basically in January here, so it does look very ugh. And I don't like that kind of look. So we're going to go over here into elementary color and bring the greens out a little bit more. Which means we're going to bring down the reds. And I'm actually going to take that other mask off there and invert my mask so that I'm affecting just the uh, other areas besides. Let's bring that out. So that way the green is a little bit more apparent. And then I'm going to feather that a little bit more. So the next step is creating a new adjustment layer. And what we're going to do is go down here, add adjustment layer. We're going to go with a 4K shot because we are working with a 4K shot here. We're going to add this adjustment layer to this shot. And this is actually going to make it a day for night scene right here. So we're going to mask out the sky. And this does not matter how exact you are, it does not matter at all. Um, if you're working with a true video clip and not just a photograph, then you probably are going to have to uh, use the uh, mask path tool over here and actually follow the trail like I did in the very next shot of the other graveyard. And uh, that was very, very difficult to uh, always keep the mask on this uh, skyline right here. But as for this shot, it's a photograph, so I really don't care too much as to uh, it moving around. Because I'm going to add the moving around later on. So I'm going to basically add Lumetri Color to this area only. And this adjustment layer takes only this area that I'm telling it to and brings down the... I'm going to bring it into an actual active layer that way I can actually see what I'm doing but I'm going to bring down my exposure a lot in that shot I'm going to bring up the contrast I'm going to bring down the highlights probably up the shadows a little bit up the whites a little bit because that's what you want to do for day for night scenes the blacks I want to take a little bit down there and now I want to 
feather that a lot and expand it a lot. And this is okay if it hits the gravestone a little bit. And notice how it's adding that little bit of black tint to the very top of the gravestone. That is absolutely fine. That's completely fine because that's how it would actually look during the nighttime. Um, it would have that dark color to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back down here to that gravestone and we're going to try to match the shot a little bit so it's a little bit darker, right? And then we're going to go to the grass area and bring, I'm sorry, that's not the grass one. This is the grass one. We're going to bring down the exposure to that as well so that this entire shot looks a lot more believable now, right? And I'm going to delete this because that's the old one. That's the original one from the actual music video. Bring that over. And now I have this completed shot. It's just a photograph that's sitting there. And if I play it right now, it's not going to do anything at all. It's not going to move. So when I bring it over here into my main sequence for my actual film, as soon as it loads, because it does take a while to load, it is a rather big file. Um, but as soon as it loads, basically what I'm going to add to it is... I'm going to add this transform and wipe smooth motion, motion uh, effect, which, if you're not aware, there are a ton of free presets out there for making your shots look like they're handheld shots. And this one I actually found in uh, a presets pack by uh, Cinecom.net. And if you're not aware, they are an amazing uh, YouTube channel here on YouTube. Uh, and they have an awesome company. So basically you go to cinecom.net slash uh, designer packs. You can go over here to video packs and find it that way on their homepage and basically sign up for their email mailing list and you get a free download of all of these really cool uh, fake handheld shots. And basically you install them and right here they show up on your presets. You drag and drop whichever of the eight effects you want. For this one, we chose the wide smooth motion one, which is down here, which is the eighth one on the list. The extreme motion just gave me too much motion for it. But this makes that photograph look like it's just a handheld shot that we actually filmed. And that's what makes this all believable. The fact that we added a couple different layers of textures to this, we made the text look like it's actually written or chiseled out of this gravestone. It's just a photograph, but we added some day for night effects on it. We added uh, some lens distortion. We added some uh, fake handheld movements to it. That all plays a, f a big factor in making it look like it's an actual believable shot. Then once that's all completed, I uh, just basically, and by the way, this is a 1920 by 1080 timeline, so it's a lot smaller than the 4K. I actually scaled it down to 54.3% to make it fit the screen, and I positioned it initially, but then this uh, transform and wipe smooth motion made it look a lot, lot better in the very end. Once you're done with that, you just export this little section. What I always end up doing is I'll take an in right there at the beginning of the shot and an out right there and I'll go up here to sequence render in and out that way uh, this shot will be rendered inside of my timeline that way it plays pretty smoothly when I'm playing it back before I export for the first time because I don't like exporting a video a million times over I like seeing what it's going to actually look like before I export it um, then my ne very next shot right here which is also of a graveyard for this one, I had to actually go through and manually uh, roto out this that, that skyline in every single frame um, because the masking on a moving on tr the tracking shot on this mask doesn't work as well as you think it does all the time. So I had to go through it there manually and uh, take that mask and make that sky look a lot more believable. But as you can tell, I just decided to make that gravestone. Uh, completely black instead of its original a uh, little bit less black but the same day for night effect was added to this shot as well to make it look like it's the same graveyard at the same exact time of the day 
So that's exactly how we created this shot of the gravestone and made it look like an actual gravestone in Myerstown. If you want to see the entire video, I will leave a link in the description box below to the actual music video so you can see the end result. Um, but if you like this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to our channel for plenty more great content to come. Like I said, these are three, uh, the trilogy of music videos has a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of editing, editing tutorials coming out in the very near future. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, showing you guys how we made these uh, three music videos. And it's just going to be a lot of fun to show you guys behind the scenes and how we did it. So please do stick around for that and subscribe to our channel and like this video. Thank you so much for joining us and see us next time here on VLAMP. Video lighting, audio music, and photography how-to show. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. Have a great day, everyone, and bye for now.